Hello, in this video, we're going to consider everything you need to know about photography filters. But to be honest, I'm not gonna share everything you need to know. What I'm gonna do is tell you everything that I know about filters. And I hope that that's gonna be able to fill in some gaps about some of the questions you may have had about filters. I'm Keith Mason and on this channel I share ideas and inspiration about photography and the techniques that will help you improve your photography. Okay, let's start off by running through the different sorts of filters, the physical ones that you can have. There are graduated filters, neutral density filters, reverse graduated filters and polarised filters. And I'm going to explain each of those in a little bit of detail. So the first type of filter is called a graduated filter. And here's one. Um, this is a, a soft graduated filter. It's dark at the top and see-through at the bottom. And when you put it over your camera, um, it reduces the amount of light uh, at the top of the frame, often the sky, that comes into the frame. And that helps you to balance the exposure to affix your filter onto your camera, you'll need a adapter ring, which is, in this case, one that looks a little bit like this. This then comes with an attachment that sits over the top and can be uh, adjusted, and then your filters drop into the camera like that. So alongside a soft graduated filter, you can also have hard graduated filters. And here you can see it's a much cleaner, clearer line that is very specific uh, in the middle of the, um, the filter that um, transitions from the dark part of the filter to the light part of the filter. And this type of filter is very good if you are uh, on a clean, clear horizon, particularly the sea. Neutral. The second type of filter you can have is a neutral density filter. The purpose of this lens is to slow down the shutter that you can have. In this particular case I've got a 0.6 neutral density filter and it stops two stops of light. The third type of filter you can have is a circular polarizing filter and I've got one here. For my polarizing lens, I've got something called a step-up ring, which brings the size of my lens up to the size of my polarizer, which then screws onto the front of the lens like this. Uh, as you turn the filter, it changes the amount of uh, polarization that you have um, coming through to your frame. So while it's difficult to um, show the effect of a polarizing uh, filter over a white piece of card, just think about your polarized sunglasses. A polarizer uh, reduces reflections and it means that you can emphasize the amount of contrast in the picture. It uh, reduces uh, reflections of water on things like leaves if you're in a woodland or particularly uh, if you're in a river uh, situation or by the sea uh, what it does is it reduces the reflection off the water and you can therefore see through the um, the surface of the water to what is below and so um, that's a, a, a filter that is really good um, that can be used creatively and artistically the fourth type of filter that you can have is called a reverse uh, graduated filter and it's particularly useful at sunrises and sunsets just as the sun either breaks the horizon or drops onto the horizon. And there you find that the most amount of light within a particular frame is at that horizon point. And so what the re reverse graduated filter does is it has a strip across the middle of the filter that reduces the amount of light where the um, horizon is so that you can um, control the amount of light coming in uh, as that 
most amount of light is at the horizon where the, uh, the sun is. Let's run through some advantages and disadvantages of physical filters. So the advantage of the grad filter is that in field you can balance out the exposure uh, of your scene, particularly if you've got a bright um, sky, because the brightness of the sky means that if you expose correctly for the sky, the camera will see the foreground as being much darker. And so the grad filter helps you to balance that out because it brings down by a certain degree, one or two or maybe even three stops, um, the amount of light that gets to the camera at the top part of the frame. So the major disadvantage with graduated uh, filters is if there is anything that breaks the horizon where you're, you move from dark to, to light on the filter, um, that item, be it a rock or a mountain or a cliff or, I don't know, a person or a lighthouse, you're now going to have to go in post-production to try and bring up the exposure of anything that's breaking the horizon line. So the ND filter um, enables you to slow down the shutter speed of your exposure so that you can um, create artistic effects that you cannot do in post-production in any other way. And for landscape photographers, um, six stops or ten stop filters are really great in really slowing down the amount of light that gets into your sensor. I'm sure you've seen scenes where the water uh, at a, a beach or on a river becomes smoothed out. That is done by ex increasing the exposure and to do that you'll need something like a, an ND filter. Can't be done any other way. A polarizing filter has three effects um, that you cannot reproduce in post-production afterwards. So you're going to need a polarizing filter if you want to reduce reflection, reduce haze, and increase contrast and thereby increase saturation. What are the disadvantages of using filters um, in the field? Well, the first of those is that they're expensive. This stuff here, that's 300 odd quid. <laughs> Sorry, for you Americans, that's 300 bucks. So they cost a lot of money. And for many photographers, that's a, a, an amount that you don't want to spend. The polarizing filter is about 100 pounds. So they're expensive. They're fiddly. You've got to have these and then you've got to screw them onto your lens. And then you find that you've got the wrong size and it doesn't fit onto your lens. And then you've got to put this on and you've got to... And I've got to be honest, often when you're out at sunrise, you're cold and your fingers don't work properly. And all this fiddliness means that it's quite difficult to, to use these things. So they're expensive, they're fiddly, they're bulky. This is why I don't want to have to be carrying in my bag if I can avoid it. If you don't want to take your graduated filters out in the field, you can do something called bracketing. Now you can set your camera to take a picture um, with a higher exposure than the one that the camera is suggesting as perfect and another one which is uh, a, at a lower exposure than the, the perfect one and then combine them in post-production so that you take advantage of the um, underexposed sky or the less exposed sky and the extra exposure in the, the land so that you get a even blend of exposures across the frame. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, okay, so uh, here in Lightroom I've got three pictures taken um, by the camera at the same time using the bracketed function. I think there was a one and a third stop between um, the first picture, the second picture which was uh, one and a third above and the third picture which was one and a third below. And you can see this is the first picture. It's probably a little bit underexposed, but the camera was center focused on uh, exposure. So the middle part of the picture is quite well exposed. The second picture much brighter and you begin to see some detail in the foreground. And the third picture much 
lower exposed and so you see a lot of detail in the uh, sky. And we can pick all three pictures and we can edit them as layers in Photoshop. So those will take the pictures over to Photoshop. So the three pictures have now opened up in Photoshop and I'm going to select all of them and um, go to edit and auto align layers. That way any, although these pictures are taken at the same time on a tripod, um, Photoshop just makes sure that everything is perfectly aligned and I'm going to say auto and that will um, take a couple of minutes to align everything and it's done that and you can see that um, through the white space around the edge there has been a slight adjustment in the um, the picture and we can clearly crop that out uh, afterwards and then it's very simple we can uh, to auto blend the layers and what this will do we're going to uh, do this as a stack what this will do is Photoshop will go through and try and identify uh, which parts of the picture are well exposed uh, and which parts are underexposed and try and blend them together to make the best of the three pictures that are there. And so you can see that in the masks here that um, uh, the Photoshop has made a reasonable job at piecing together bits of uh, the sky, just this bottom one here has got that part of sky, um, the middle here with the, um, the, the lighter foreground and the original picture um, has taken uh, part of the sea and the lighthouse. So once you've, you've got that uh, you can then uh, save it as a um, a combined picture and it will bring it back into Lightroom uh, where you can edit it further. So here's the image um, back in, in Lightroom and we can make further edits and you can see now that it is exposed uh, through uh, from, from dark through to light and a little bit more evenly balanced. I don't think it's a great edit or it, but it's a place to start. What happens if you haven't got Photoshop and uh, can you do this in Lightroom and yes you can. I'm going to show you a different example. Here is an example of a picture taken with a hard grad and it shows and it reveals the problems that you get um, when you're using a hard grad. You can see a very clear line uh, along the horizon. Probably the, the grad that I used here is a little bit too dark. Uh, because the sky is really very dark um, and obviously now I'm going to have to do a bunch of work in trying to um, bring that picture back but you'll see that the problem here is that the lighthouse is is very dark so now because the um, the lighthouse here has broken the horizon I'm going to have to do extra editing work well at the same time I took um, Two, two pictures at the same time as I, I used the, the, the grad. Uh, this picture is reasonably exposed, uh, but the sky uh, is a little bright. And this version here, uh, the foreground and the sea is, is rather dark, uh, but this, there is a lot of detail in the sky. And here, if we, we look here back to the, the lighthouse, we've got the exposure on the lighthouse reasonable and so it overcomes that problem with the hard grad. So here, how can we work with this in Lightroom? If I, if I select both pictures and photo merge to HDR, high dynamic range, Light should, Lightroom will have an attempt at trying to bring these two pictures together. Now, again, I'm going to auto align to make sure that the two pictures are, are perfectly aligned and create a stack and I'm going to press merge and what we get is I think a much better more even picture uh, than I got by using the the hard grad. So here is the combined picture. I don't think it's finished. I'm going to do some more work on it but it's a much more evenly balanced 
um, exposure across the frame and something that I can now see the foreground uh, very clearly. Um, I've got all of the detail in the sky. The lighthouse is reasonably uh, exposed. And this part over here, I could do some work where the um, sun is setting, um, but I'm, I'm pleased with that. In Lightroom, there are two types of filter. There is a graduated filter and a radial filter. And you can see those uh, over here. This is the graduated filter, and this one here is the radial filter. And I'll show you, I'm going to talk you through a workflow for this picture that I, I took uh, in St Agnes in Cornwall. Um, and you can see the challenge of using a grad filter in, um, in situ, because if I had taken a grad filter down here to the horizon, this area over here on the cliffs would be even darker than they already are. So, um, what can I do in post-production uh, that gets around that? So I'm going to add um, a graduated filter and you can um, pick it up and drag it over the horizon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the exposure down and you can see straight away the, there is much more interest uh, and detail in the sky. It's becoming um, uh, a much more interesting part of the image. I do want to bring up the shadows a tiny bit. Um, I'm going to bring the, this down onto the horizon here. And I'm going to use the dehaze function here to try and get more uh, contrast in the sky. And I think that's, that's quite nice. But you can see now that all of this cliff is now very dark. If you press O, you can see the mask. It turns red here. And if you take a brush and hit erase, you can essentially paint out where your edits um, are uh, impacted. So now, um, let's go a little bit harder here. I'll push the flow up a little bit. This is before I've introduced the um, the grad mark, uh, the graduated filter, and now this is with it. And you can see that the just the sky is really impacted. So that's a graduated filter, but I said that I was going to show you the radial filter as well. And here, if I take a radial filter, um, I'm going to talk you through what I'm trying to achieve here. What I would like is that I've got more detail and exposure uh, um, and to be able to see more of the cliffs here. I'm particularly interested in this rock down here uh, to bring it out as a foreground um, subject area. And for me, um, beaches and sand ought to be <laughs> yellow. That's what we think of them. And so I want to try and impact the, um, uh, the beach. So, so I'm going to take a radial filter, and a radial filter can be any shape and size uh, as long as it's an oval. And so I am going to take a radial filter and put it over this rock here in the foreground. I'm going to bring up the exposure a little bit, and I'm going to bring up the, the clarity. And now you can see that in post-production, a filter like this is much more effective of trying to uh, dodge and burn and bring out various details in your picture that you're trying to emphasize. So I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to take another radial filter onto this cliff here. And you can turn them around. And again, I'm going to bring up the exposure here. And I'm particularly going to bring up the shadows. So there I'm really revealing um, the, um, the, the detail in the, the cliff here. I'm going to add just another a small one here right in the corner. Just because it, it looks really quite dark there. And now I'm happy with that. And I said that I also wanted to change the color of the uh, beach. And here 
uh, you can use a radial filter to uh, change the white balance just on a localized basis. And here, if I bring the temperature of the beach up, I begin to get um, the beach to be a little bit more <laughs> yellow. Uh, so this is before we've uh, added any adjustments. And this is the final picture. So very um, effective use of filters uh, in post hoc. So in this picture of um, Penarth Pier, the sun is just breaking across the horizon. And I'm not going to do lots of edits here. I just want to show you how you can uh, use a radial filter as a, um, a, a quasi reverse um, grad filter. So here I'm going to take a long thin um, filter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the dehaze and I'm going to reduce the exposure. Now I can I'm only doing this very quickly but by using a long thin um, radial filter you can do essentially the same as a um, uh, a reverse grad. Yes, yeah, so I've just about managed to um, save any blown out highlights. So the sun is breaking there. And I do a lot of uh, work with that. This is where I got to with this particular edit. Coming back to graduated filters, uh, we've got this problem. This is my street, uh, and we've got a really nice sky. It was a really nice sunset. But I want to show you uh, how you can uh, be a little bit more uh, selective and, and deal with that problem that I showed you about that cliff. So in this picture, we've got a similar sort of problem. We've got a very dark foreground because I've exposed the image for the sky, which was really interesting. And... Um, if I bring up the exposure to see the street, I lose all of the detail in the sky. So what I can do is I can get the foreground where I want it to be and then bring the exposure down in the sky. So again, I'm using a radial filter and I'm going to bring this down here. It's quite a sharp one. And if I turn on the O, you can see where the, the mask is. I'm going to turn that off and I'm just going to focus on the, the sky and yeah, look at that. Lovely, lovely um, sky. I'm going to increase the dehaze to make it even more um, uh, sort of striking. I'm going to bring up the whites a little bit, bring the darks down uh, a touch. But now you can see that <laughs> what I've previously done with the, um, the houses has been um, impacted by the radial filter that I, I've introduced. And I'll show you a different way of, of dealing with this. If you go to the luminance uh, mask and you turn the, the mask on, you can see the houses here are, are both uh, are all impacted. But what you can do is you can change the, the light range that is impacted by your mask. And now you can see by increasing the, uh, reducing the range of light just to the higher, more light areas of the, uh, um, the sky, and I'll just bring that down a bit, I am able to make the filter just focus on those light parts. So now I've got a, an image which I'm reasonably happy with. And I would do a little bit more work on the foreground, but that's not the purpose of this particular video. So you can use erasing parts of your mask just to be quite selective, or you can use a luminance um, selection based on a particular range of uh, colors uh, of lights within um, Lightroom uh, to apply to your graduated filter. So in conclusion, I don't think that you really need graduated filters. So um, learn how to bracket your pictures in field, either using automated three or five image uh, brackets, 
or by taking a number of pictures at different exposures at the same time. You will need to take a tripod. Net, neutral density filters slow down your uh, exposure and you're going to need those if you want to take any long exposures, particularly of water or um, clouds moving uh, over, an, over uh, a scene. Polarizers are essential. If you don't want to be carrying the faff of these sort of um, adapters, consider getting screw-in uh, lenses, which are, uh, you can get ND filters which screw in and the polarizers, as I showed you, uh, screwed straight onto the lens. I hope this video has been useful to you and if it has, please consider subscribing uh, and I hope to see you again um, on my next video. Bye for now.